Amen. Give God one more crazy praise. Woo! Amen. Now, listen, listen. Tonight, I want to talk to you that uh, uh, on this topic right here, Jesus is always with you. Do you know him? Tonight, what I want you to understand, this is, this is something that I believe when you get a revelation of this, and tonight you'll get a revelation of this, that it will give you a brand new peace and you'll realize how rich you are. What you'll realize tonight, everything that you really have right now. And it's the realization of what you have that brings the manifestation of it. Are y'all listening to me? It's the realization of this blessing, Kyle, uh, that God is with you. That's made. That's more than anything. It's more valuable than anything. And I want to show you it in the scriptures. And uh, are y'all with me? And, and, And let me say it like this. God wants you to know that he's always with you. And he wants you to know the benefit of that. He wants to be with you more than you want to be with him. If you're a parent, you'll understand that. One of the, one of the toughest uh, days, and I got to tell you, you know, we got three kids and two of them are grown up, but one of them is little. One of them is six. Trey, y'all know Trey. And uh, I got to tell you, uh, he teaches me so much and I've learned so much about the heart of God just by observing how I feel about him and how he responds to me. Uh, this year was his, it, uh, his first year in school, in kindergarten. And it was a rough day for me and Shanae because, uh, you know, Shanae's at home all the time. And so Trey is at home with her. And when it was time for him to go to, to uh, you know, it, well, let's, let's back up. Even when we first, the first time we were, we left him with somebody else. The first time. I'm telling you, we're the whole time. We're uh, wonder how everything's going. As parents, we're so, we so want to make sure that he's comfortable and happy. We're so concerned, you know, so, so when he, we left the summer, I think we went on a, a vacation somewhere and we went without him and the whole time I'm like, let's, let's call home, let's call home, let's, let's ch- just check out, make sure he's doing all right, let's make sure, you know, I don't want him to miss me, I don't want him to be afraid of anything, I don't want him to be fearful, I know that's how God feels about us. Let me just show you something, let me, here, can I just hit the lights for me, can y'all put that first pic, watch this, here's, here's, look at this bewildered look on his face, this is the first day of school. There's all the group of kids behind him, but here's him by himself. Standing here, and he was just concerned. He's never ridden on the bus. He's never, you know, he's never done any of that. So he's standing there. Uh, Mom is in front of him taking the pictures. I'm over here on the side. You can't see me over on the left, but I'm with the video camera, see? Okay, let's get the next one. Put the next one up there. This is him getting on the bus. Uh, Okay, and there's a reason I'm showing you all these, just because I want to just show you how God is. But here's how we are as parents. Right now, uh, she took this picture, and I'm right over here by her taking video. Okay, next one. Sinead leaves after she takes that picture and jumps in her car. She follows the bus his whole route. Follows the bus his whole route all the way to the school. She parks at Northern High School, Northern Elementary School, jumps out of her car. I know how far it is from the parking lot to the school and where the buses drop them off because I've been there. It's a long run. She had to jump out of her car, run up to where the kids are getting off, stand there with her camera at the school and took a picture of our boy getting off the school bus. Come on, somebody. But that wasn't enough. Hit the next She followed him to the classroom and took his picture there. And the whole time I'm calling her, hey, what's the, how's the classroom? How's the, t- everything all right in there? Is he nervous? Is he scared? Is everything good? Because we're parents and we love our kids. And Jesus, you can turn the lights on. Jesus said, if you being evil, you being human, short shortcomings, know how to give good gifts because you love your children. How much more do I love you? And as a parent, it gives us some insight to how God feels about us. We all, he always wants to be where you are, but I think oftentimes we don't know what the benefit of that is. And that's what I want to show you today. Are y'all with me? Throughout, throughout the Bible, you, I've, I studied this and there's every one of the patriarchs, God told them one thing. One main thing he kept reminding them and t- kept telling them, I'm with you. That's it. For whatever their problem was, he would say one answer, I'm with you. Fear not. No explanation other than I'm with you. 
I want you to see this because I think it will give you revelation and peace about whatever you're facing. Him being with you is more than enough for everything you need, and it is his answer for everything you need. Amen. That's his answer. When we understand why, you'll see and begin, you'll begin to see the manifestation of everything that he has for you. Let me show you it in the scriptures. You all ready? Turn over to first our patriarch, the, the father of faith. How about Abraham? Everybody say Abraham. Turn to Genesis chapter 15. This may sound familiar to you. Genesis chapter 15. God met, uh, God introduced himself to Abram in Genesis chapter 12. And that's where he made a, a promise to him. He said, look, Abraham, uh, in chapter 12, he said, get away from your family. He says, I, I want to bless you. And I'm going to bless everybody who blesses you. And I'm going to curse anybody who curses you. Amen. And uh, he says, I'm going to bless you, right? And then that was in chapter 12. Then there was chapter 13. Then there was chapter 14. Then came chapter 14. 15, verse 1, after these things, after what things? After 10 years transpired. God told him, hey, I'm going to give you kids. Your kids are going to be innumerable like the sand of the seashore and like the stars of the sky. 10 years went by, no kids. Abram, so God speaks up. God speaks to him first and says, after all these things, after all these things, tra time transpiring and no fruit yet. <laughs> all right. God says to him, he says, uh, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision saying, don't be afraid, Abram. I'm your shield, your exceedingly great reward. I'm your reward. I'm the thing you need. Look at Abram's answer. Because God answered the question before he even answered it, asked it. Watch Abram's question. But Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me? Seeing I go childless. He had already answered the question. He said, I'm your great reward. I'm your exceeding, I'm your shield and your exceed. I'm the thing that you need. You need to perceive who I am first. You get that? That's going to overshadow everything you need and bring everything you need. Watch this. He says, seeing I go childless and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. Then Abram said, look, look what Abram saying to him. God, look, hold up. God, you don't understand. Let me show you. Let me explain something to you. God, Abram wants to bring God down on his level and explain something to him. He says, look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my, in my house is my heir. The one who's born in my house is going to be my heir. And behold, the word of, look, the word behold means see. God says, no, 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 you look. The word of the Lord came to him saying, this one shall not be your heir. Eliezer shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. I told you I'm giving you children. You and your wife is from y'all, right? Next. Then, and Ab and then he brought him outside his tent. Listen, and I really want to preach this whole thing. This isn't my message, but I want you to get the picture here. Abram's sitting inside of a tent going, God, come here. Let me show you something. I ain't got no kids, and I just want one kid. God says, let me show you something. Get out from that little tent that you're in. You can't see well in there. Come out here and look out here into the starlight. And he said, you look now. Don't tell me to look at what you're looking at down there. You come and look at what I'm looking at. Look now towards the heavens and count the stars if you're able to number them. Then he said to him, that's the number of seeds I'm going to give you right there. You're looking in there. You can't see right. Come out here with me, that. You're thinking too small. You only want one. I'm trying to give you everything. But you're seeing from a wrong perspective, all right? So he's, he's showing him, you're looking at the wrong perspective. Your whole perspective is wrong because you're seeing you in your little position. Come out here and see where I am. I see bigger than you. You're, tr you're asking for one. I'm trying to give you everything. The problem was he's seeing his ability. God's saying, don't see your ability, see me. I'm your reward. If you knew who I was, you wouldn't be thinking about one child. This wouldn't even be your problem. Wow. Are y'all listening to me? All right. Now watch this. In chapter 20, turn to Genesis chapter 20, verse 14 and 15. I'm going to tell you the story here. Years have gone by. Years have transpired. And uh, at this point, uh, Abram is n uh, nearly 100. Sarah is 90, uh, is 90 years old. All right. Still no child. But watch this. Sarah is so beautiful right now that Abimelech, the, he's like a king, wants, wants Sarah, right? He takes Sarah because Abram and her lied and said that she's his sister, right? 
They take him, and of course, Abimelech, y'all know the story. He has a dream at night, and uh, God says, hey, you better give her back. If you don't, you're going to die. And, uh, you know, he scared him real bad, and he, he calls Abram and says, Abram, what in the world are you thinking, man? Why would you do this to me? How could you do this? And, and he rebukes him. And if you read that whole text in here, it says Sarah was rebuked. Abimelech got in front of him, and he was kind of, he was like, listen, I don't know what y'all are thinking lying to me like this. Here's what I'm going to do, though. Take some sheep, take some oxen, uh, some male and female servants, and he gave them to Abraham, and he restored Sarah, his wife, to him. Next. And Abimelech said, see, my land is before you. Dwell where it pleases you. This is all my land. I'm going to give you some of it. Go live where you want. Anywhere you want, go live in it. All right? The next year, he has this baby. Within nine months, he has the, Abraham has the promised child, right? Abraham has the promised child, and he begins to realize, hold on, God's with me. I keep getting blessed. Look at the next chapter. The next chapter, uh, 21 and verse 22. I'm going to read it all. You can look in your Bible. Watch this. And it came to pass at that time that Abimelech, Abimelech comes back to him with the commander of his army, and they speak to Abram. They said, they said this, oh, excuse us, uh, God is with you in all that you do. We see this, right? Something happened. Something happened that's, that is causing everybody now to recognize that God is with Abraham. What it was was Abraham realized it. Watch what happened. Now, therefore, swear to me by God that you will not deal falsely with me. This is, this is Abimelech and his commander. Uh, with my offspring or with my, po my posterity, but that according to the kindness that I've done to you, that you will do to me and to the land in which you have dwelt. Next. And Abram said, I will swear. Then Abraham rebuked Abimelech. What's happened? Tables have turned. First, Abimelech's rebuking him, watch this, and giving him land and saying, you go live over there. Just get over here. Go over there and live there and be quiet. And Abraham said, I swear, I'm not going to hurt you. Then Abraham rebuked Abimelech because of a well of water, which Abimelech's servant sees. Next. Abimelech said, I do not know who's done this thing. And didn't, they didn't tell me. And I didn't hear of it till today. Next. So Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave them to Abimelech. Positions have changed. Now, Abram's in a, Abraham's in a position of wealth and authority. He rebukes him and tells him, now you take this and then you go on out of here. Watch this. Watch his son. Go to the next one. Go to uh, uh, Genesis chapter 26 and verse 24. Here's something very interesting that you'll notice. That every one of the patriarchs emphasized this saying, God's with you. They emphasized that to their children. They told their children. Their children were aware that God was with them. He'd never leave him nor forsake him. Watch this. And Isaac, Isaac said to them, why have you come to me since you hate me? He's talking to Abimelech again. This is Abimelech years later. Why, Abimelech is a, is a position, all right? It's, it's a title, like Pharaoh is a title, like king is a title, like president is a title, all right? Isaac said to them, why have you come to me? He's talking to, to Abimelech and this same guy, Phicol, the commander of his army, since you hate me and have sent me away from you. He said, why are you coming over here? But they said, uh, we have certainly seen that the Lord is with you. He said, y'all hate me. You've sent me out of the land before. This is Isaac, right? And so, so we said, let there be an oath between us. He said, uh, listen to what they came and said to him later. They said, hold on, uh, you know, we want to kind of, if you're reading the Amplified, it says, we want to apologize, first of all. Uh, uh, we recognize that the Lord is with you, all right? He says, so let there now be an oath between us and, and between you and us, and let us make a covenant. Can we make a covenant with you so you won't hurt us? Next. That you will do us no harm since we have not touched you and since we have done nothing to you but good and have sent you away. And we sent you away. Yes, we told you to get out of here, but we didn't hit you. <laughs> if you're reading the Amplified, it really breaks it down because he says, listen, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're really apologizing, but, uh, but would you please be nice to us? Don't hurt us. Right. And since we've done nothing to you but good and uh, sent you away in peace, you are now blessed of the Lord. Verse 31, then they arose early in the morning and swore an oath with one another and Isaac sent them away. He said, all right, Derek, I'm not going to mess with you. Now, y'all get out of here. Again, same thing. Tables of turns. Once Isaac realizes, hold on, God is with me. God is with me. And, and once he realizes that, the people around him start seeing the fruit of that. 
When you realize what it means that God's with you, you'll begin to see the fruit of it. Let me show you more. Turn over to uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Genesis 28, 15. This is passed down to every one of their children. That's why I just want to show you this one real quick. Behold, look at this. This is Abram. I mean, this is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I've spoken to you. What it means when God says I'm with you means you've got my favor and grace and everything that I promise is coming to you. Watch this. Let's hit the next one. Go over to, uh, y'all heard of Joseph, right? Joseph, the, uh, the 11th son of, of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, okay? Genesis chapter 39, verse 1 through 5. Watch this. Y'all remember the story of Joseph? Joseph was hated by his brothers. He was, they were jealous of him. Even his parents were questioning him. Like, oh. Why? Because he had a dream that was given to him from the Lord that his family, his whole family, would bow down to him and serve him. And of course, he, he, in his immaturity, he told them. Yeah, he, he should have kept that on the low, low. But he, he was just zealous and excited and told them, right? And uh, so his brothers hated him. His dad had given him a special coat of what he called the coat of many colors. His brother said, oh, here comes that dreamer again. Here comes Joe the dreamer. Let me, and so they threw him, they threw him in a, wi- a well that didn't have any water in it. Can you imagine that? Just throwing him in the, he lands in the bottom of a well. They're up there eating and talking about what are, they, what are we going to do with him? Some of them are saying, let's kill him. Let's kill him. Then one of the brothers says, no, let's sell him. We might as well make some money off him. And that's what they do. They sell him into slavery. They sell him off to the, uh, to the Ishmaelites. Watch this. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt and pot- he was sold to... Uh, to Egyptians, I guess, uh, had been taken down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer, he was the chief executioner of Egypt, all right? A captain of the guard, an Egyptian bought him. He paid money, 20, piece, 20 shekels of silver from the Ishmaelites. So it was Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. All right, now get the picture here. Joseph now, after being betrayed by all his family, stripped of everything, he's standing here on, a, on an auction block as a slave in chains and fetters. He's stripped naked because they have to check, the, check these slaves and make sure that they're, they're healthy, that there's no disease on them. He's standing there naked with chains on him. And look at the next verse. The Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man. The Lord was with him while he was, a, while he was right now a slave and in chains, getting, being sold on the action block, families against him, nobody likes him, no friends, everything in, in, in life is seemingly against him, in chains, being sold in slavery, and God says the Lord was with him, and he was a successful man. Do you know that right now, if God is with you, that means if you're born again, you are a successful person right now. Successful people are happy. They go, whoo, thank you, Jesus. Why am I successful when it doesn't look like I'm successful? Because God's with you. Oh, no, y'all. See, if, listen to me, the day, the day that in your heart, you being in Christ and Christ in you is bigger than whatever mess that you're in, is the day you get free. Here's this man in chains, but he was successful. And he knew it. He was, he was free, even though he's standing there in chains. Watch this. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. How does he see that the Lord is with him? When he's just, thank you, by his attitude and his behavior. He knows God's with him. It's bad right now, but I know God's with me. Y'all going to get it in a minute. Just, just stick with me. Just stick with me. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nothing was prospering yet. He's a slave. Watch this. So Joseph found favor. That's grace. That's synonymous with grace. In his sight. And served him. Then he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had, he put under his authority. After the, the Pharaoh, I mean, uh, the execution of Potiphar sees this guy's attitude, sees how the, he's got this winning attitude, that he's got this great demeanor, that he's, come on, y'all seen these people. It doesn't matter what goes on, and they're still like, thank you, Jesus. God is with me. I can't lose. Watch this. So verse five, so it was from the time that he had, had made him overseer over his house that all the, 
and all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house because of Joseph, for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had. All right. Jump on over, if you would, to verse 20 through 23. Same chapter. Then Joseph, watch this. Jo, uh, uh, Potiphar's wife saw how handsome Joseph was. The Bible talks about how, how he was a very attractive young man. And so uh, his, the Potiphar's wife, the chief executioner's wife, saw him. He's like, mm, mm, I got to have that young boy. And she kept saying, sleep with me. Come on and just, just lie with me. And he was avoiding her. But one day he happened to be in the house by himself. And she saw him in the house and she went over and grabbed him and said, hey, I, you, you got to come and sleep with me. He's, and he took off running, but she grabbed his, his shirt or his coat and, and then accused him of raping her. Right. So his master is furious, but he and he throws him in prison. Watch this. Then Joseph's master, Potiphar, took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined. And he was there in the prison. You get that? He was there. In the, he was in prison. But. The Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Next. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hands, hands all the prisoners who were in the prison. And whatever they did there, it was his doing. Joseph. And the keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. Are y'all with me? So again, here he is even in prison. Hold on. No, no, no. get my point here. Most of us, if, if our title was slave, we wouldn't think God was with us. We go, well, the Lord must, uh, must not be. But you don't hear any complaining. You don't hear any of that. You don't even see any bad attitude. In fact, after he gets into prison, the uh, two people, uh, the butler and the baker of the king, end up in prison. Right. And when they get in prison, they come to Joseph and Joseph sees them one day. If you read this, it's all in here. They say to Joseph, uh, Joseph says to them, why you all have them sad, sad looks on your face? And they said, well, if you didn't notice, <laughs> we're in prison. He said, well, if you didn't notice, I was here before you got here. <laughs> and I'm innocent. <laughs> they said, we are, too. Because <laughs> everybody's innocent, you know. And uh, <laughs> but anyway. And, uh, and watch this. Uh, they said they had both of them had dreams. They said, hey, look, look here. We got these dreams. Joseph said, y'all have some dreams. He said, I, I interpret dreams. It's, it's amazing. I can, I, God interprets these dreams. I can interpret the dream. So he, they tell him the dream. He says, look here. Here's the news. You, Butler, things going to be all right for you. In so many days, I think it was seven days or three days, you going to get out of here. But you, Mr. Baker, I'm sorry to tell you, <laughs> your head's going to be cut off. You're going to be, be dead in the next so many days, right? And it happened just like that. But he told the butler, he said, look here, when you get out of here and you go back to the king's palace, don't forget me. Guess what? He forgot him. <laughs> he left him in there a number of years. He was in there a number of years after that. But he still has a good attitude. See, some of y'all are whining and crying about what's going on and you ain't even thinking that God's with you. Come on, yeah. I'm not. Con I'm not making. I'm not trying to condemn you about this, but I'm just telling you. This is what it is right here. You got when you realize God's with me. Yeah. Watch this, right? So the finally the, the uh, Pharaoh has this dream. He has this dream, and he, and he doesn't know what the interpretation is. He asks all his his servants, and there nobody can tell him the interpretation. Then the butler goes, "Oh yeah." You know, when I was in prison about a couple years ago, there was this dude in there named Joseph, and he could interpret dreams. He interpreted my dream. It came to pass just like it said. I bet he could interpret this dream. He said, go get him today. That day, everything turned around for him. That day, he interpreted the, the Pharaoh's dream, and guess what? Pharaoh said, look at here. This is awesome. And he, gave him a, he, he told him, uh, this is what the dream means, and here's what you need to do about it, right? And as soon as he did that, he said, look at here. You're no longer a slave. In fact, you're a second in charge. In fact, you're next in line to me. You're in charge of all the agriculture. You are next to me. Everyone will bow down to you when they see you. All right? Amazing. Everything changed in one day. Now, think about this, though. Everything, when you know that God is with you, watch this. Had he not been betrayed by his own brothers, thrown into the pit, he wouldn't have been able to be sold into, into slavery. He, they, he wouldn't have been able to be sold to the Ishmaelites. If he hadn't have been sold to the Ishmaelites, he couldn't have been sold at the auction block. 
Had he not been sold at the auction, if he had not been at the auction block that day, that day is the day that Potiphar happened to be there. If Potiphar, ha if, it hadn't, if he hadn't been on the auction block being sold as a slave that day, he wouldn't have ended up in Potiphar's house. If he hadn't have been uh, bought by Potiphar as a slave, he wouldn't have been in the position for Potiphar's wife to accuse him of a sexual crime. If he hadn't have been in, accused of a sexual crime, he wouldn't have been in prison where the butler and the baker were, right at the right time. If he hadn't have been in that prison when the butler and baker were there, he couldn't have interpreted the butler's dream. And if he wouldn't have interpreted the butler's dream, the butler wouldn't have known to tell the king about him and where he was. If he hadn't have been in Potiphar's house, he wouldn't even have been in prison. You think prison's bad? Prison's good if God's with you. Everything changed that day. And everything works for good. Everything works for good when you know God's with you. Come on, somebody. My wife and I were sitting at breakfast this morning and drinking coffee and talking. And, she, and we were just talking about, do you have any regrets in life? What are your any regrets? And, and we were sharing our regrets and personal. I won't even share some of the stuff with you. But uh, she said, you know, I don't regret this thing. And I said, what about this? And she goes, no, I don't, because this wouldn't have happened. I said, you know, you're right. And she said, and if that wouldn't have happened, I would have never met you. And if that wouldn't happen, we would have never had Trey. Amen. And, you know, and, and she went on all about that. I was like, wow, you're right. That's right. See, if you'll get the right perspective right where you are right now, know that God's working everything for my good, even though it looks bad right now. There's wisdom right in the middle of your problem right now. If you'll recognize that God's there with you and say, God, give me the wisdom for this situation right here. This situation can turn around and it will be something. I, I was sitting in the office today with somebody just, uh, they wanted to talk to me about a relationship and all this sort of stuff. And uh, I said, listen, they want me to pray about it. And I said, well, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to pray about it, but let me just give you some wisdom here. If it works out, it's going to be for your good. If it don't work out, it's going to be for your good. I said, you just need to be ready and know that God's with you. And whatever it is, let's pray that his perfect will be done. And rest with that. I said, you, you ready for that? And he was like, I, don't know. I, said, I said, you may not be, but let me just tell you, I know what I'm talking about. I've been there. Been there before. Are y'all with me? And there's people who want to be married real bad that you need to thank God that you ain't married. Wow. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. I can't even look right now because people are looking at me. Amen. I'm mad at Pastor. No, you would be thanking me for every day. You, listen to me. You better be glad that God didn't answer some of your prayers. <laughs> Oh, come on, y'all ain't going to be real. How many of y'all glad that some of the prayers you used to pray, God did not answer those? Yeah, please believe that. Please believe that. Know that when I'm concerned about Trey and my kids, I know more than they do. I know what, when they think they want that, I know that they don't need that. I go, the time ain't now, Betty, but it's coming. You got it? And it's just, it's, we have to trust him as a loving father, right? And that's what he's wanting us to know. I'm with you. I'm with you. Don't worry about I got this. Let me show y'all in the scriptures. I'm sorry. I'm messing with y'all. Watch this. Jump on over to uh, uh, Exodus. Now we're ready for Exodus. Moses, when he first, uh, God introduces himself to him. Watch this. And the Lord said, I've surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry. Exodus chapter 3, verse 7. Because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So I have come down, God saying this, he's on the burning bush, Moses is standing there with his shoes off. God says, I've come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Moses right now is like, yes, God, you're awesome, yes. And to bring them up from that land to a good and large land, God, you're awesome. Moses is like starting to praise, yes, God, you're awesome. To a land flowing with milk and honey, Moses is like, amen. <laughs> To a place of the Canaanites, well, okay, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the 
Hivites and the Jebusites. Moses is like, it's good if you're getting them out of there, God. Yes, that's good. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord saying, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me. And I've also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore. He's telling this to Moses. Moses is like, yes, Lord. Yes, you see their oppression. You see our oppression. Oh, thank you, Lord. Come now, Moses, therefore, and I'm going to send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. He was doing good right till then. But, 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 I, 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 I got, I got issues, right? I, he said, you're going to bring him out of, I came down here to talk to you because you're the one who's going to bring him up out of Egypt. Hit the next verse, 11. But Moses said to God, who, 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 who am I, 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 that, he had a stuttering and stammering problem, right? That I should bring up the ch- 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 children of Israel out of Egypt, Egypt. how you pick me? So he said, Look at God's answer. So he said, I will certainly be with you. Watch what Moses says. And this, watch what God says. This is a beautiful sign. Because Moses wants a sign. How, 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 how I know you, 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 you're going to be with me. And this should be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt. <laughs> you serve me on this mountain. When you come out, <laughs> what I'm saying is, what's the, hit the next one, hit the next one. Look at chapter 33. Then Moses said to the Lord, see, you say to me, bring up this people, but you've not let me know whom you will send with me. Yes, I did. I told you, I will certainly be with you. That's all you need. But, 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 see, look what is the next word. But you, but you, no, 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 no. I already told you, I'm with you. That's all you need right there. That's good. If I'm with you, you're good. Watch what Moses realized. But you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name. Moses said, hold on. Now you said, you know me by name. Yet you tell me to bring the people out, but you aren't telling me who's, who you're sending with me. Yet you have not said, I know, yet you have said, I know you by name and you have also, and you have also found grace in my sight. God told him, you found grace, favor in my sight. I'm with you, therefore you got my grace. Amen. No, no, I'm with you, therefore my grace and favor is with you. Now, therefore, I pray if I have found, Moses says this, now, therefore, I pray if I found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. Moses is saying, hold up, hold up. Make this plain to me. I need your grace and your favor. I need to know that you're with me. And God said, my presence will go with you. That's all you need to know. My presence will go with you. If you understand my presence is with, with you, you'll have rest. I'll give you rest. You just relax. You don't have to do it. You just rest. Then he said to him, Hold on. If your presence does not go with us, don't even bring us up out of here then. Now, Moses understands, hmm, if your presence goes with me, we're good. If your presence isn't with us, don't even, we don't want to go out of here. For how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight except you go with us? Oh, God, y'all just missed that right there. Look at this. For how then will it be known that your people have found grace? favor and grace in your sight, except you say, except you're going with us. If you're with us, then everybody's going to know your grace is with us. That's going to settle in. I can see people. What do you say? So we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. You go with us. Your grace is with us. Everybody's going to know that we've got favor and we're different than them. Do y'all get that? Mark that in your Bible. Okay, let's move on. (laughs) Joshua. Okay, get the picture here. Joshua chapter 1. Moses doesn't get into the promised land, right? Moses doesn't get into the promised land because he, he uh, showed out in front of God, in front of the people. All right, long story another day. Leadership lesson there. Yeah, he got an attitude. He did. 
Attitudes will really jack you up. And it, God has all the time in the world. He's got eternity. A light. Okay, watch, watch. Now watch this. Think of this. Moses, the Bible says that Moses talked face to face to God like a friend. He had this grace and this favor on him. Everybody was looking to Moses. Everybody was, uh, you know, looking to him. And now he's dead. God says, watch this. After the death of, the, of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Look, that's in the past. It's a done deal. It's a wrap. Let it go. That's it. Y'all been mourning for 30 days? It's done now. Let's move forward. Now, therefore, arise. Go over this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I'm giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. From the wilderness of this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. Last one. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Why? As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. That's it. I'm with you like I was with Moses. Now listen to what he's saying here. I'm never going to leave you or forsake you. I'm with you. I got you. Nobody can stand up against you. Now, when they were at the Red Sea, weren't they nervous thinking, well, where is God? Moses, you brought us out here to kill us. When they were thirsty, where is Moses? Where are you, God? Where, where, you, you bring us out here to kill us? When we're hungry, what's going on? God said, I can't take you straight in that promised land because y'all don't trust me yet. I have to put you in some situations where you look to me and realize I'm there, give you peace in that situation. I'm gonna, did he not deliver them every time? Just the ones that said, nope, I don't believe this. They died murmuring and complaining after the law came. Are you with me? Look what he says. He says it over and over. Be strong and of good courage. For this people you shall divide as an inheritance to the land which I swore to them and their fathers to give them. He's saying, listen, now be strong and courageous. Here's what you need to know. I'm with you. Don't even worry. I'm with you. All right? Say, God's with me. God's with me. All right. Now, let's look over at the New Testament and let's, uh, you've heard me talk about this. I'm going to start in, in John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Remember this, John chapter 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. All five of these chapters are at the Last Supper. Jesus last night before he goes to the cross. All right? These are some of the most, the, they are some of the most intimate chapters. It's some of the most intimate uh, dialogue of Jesus. He's, the whole chapter is him just talking. They ask a few questions, but the whole dissertation is him saying, don't worry. Don't fear y'all. Here, let's just read it. Can we start at chapter 14? Let not your heart be troubled. Jesus, Jesus is sitting there with me. He says, if you believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I got to go to prepare a place for you. Now imagine how that place is. If Jesus got to go then, and, uh, you know it's going to be awesome. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. Now this, this sounds so much like a parent who's concerned about his kids. He says, listen, y'all, I got to go. But listen, I'm going to prepare a place for you. If it weren't true, I wouldn't even tell you this. But I'm telling you, I'm going to prepare a place for you. But if I go there, I will come again and receive you to myself. Why? That wherever I am, there you may be also. I want you to be wherever I am. And wherever you are, I want to be there. This is, I'm telling you, this is, this is the love. And because Watch, hit the next verse. Can y'all hit the very next one? Watch what he says. And where I go, you know. And the way you know. Remember, we talked about this. This is all in that dissertation. He says, Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're talking about. We don't know where you're going. So how in the world can we know the way to get there? Love Thomas. Thomas, look what Jesus says. Jesus said to him, I am the way. Listen, here's all you need to know. It's me. I'm everything you need. If I'm with you, just know it's all good. Are y'all with me? Uh, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except by me. I'm all you need. I am it. Listen to it. Watch this. Verse 7. He says, if you had known me, if you knew who I was, you would have known my Father also. Now get the picture of this because he's saying the whole time in this dissertation he's talking about, you haven't seen the Father, but you've seen me. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. 
Watch this next part. He said, if you've known me, you would, have, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. From now on, know that you know him because you're looking at him. I'm the express image of him. Philip said to him, watch Philip. I love these disciples. They're just like us. They're just human, God, human beings, just regular dudes. Philip said to him, hold up, Lord. <laughs> that sounds all nice and everything, but show us the father and that would be sufficient. <laughs> Hit the next one. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me? Now listen to what he's saying right here because I really believe this is a word to the church. Have I been with you so long and yet you still don't know me? I've been with you all these years and yet you still don't know my character, who I am. You don't know how much I love you. You apparently don't know that. He said, he who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? I just told you. He said, do you not, watch, do you not believe that I'm in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me. Good what he's trying to show him. The Father who dwells in me. He's the one who's doing all this. He does the works. Next. Believe me that I'm in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me at least just for the works themselves. Just see that I open blind eyes, I raise the dead. Come on. All right? So if you don't, if you don't get all that, just see what I did and then you'll know who I am. All right? Hit the next one, please. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, if you get this, Philip, if you get this, guys, right. disciples, listen, he's sitting there at dinner telling them, if y'all get this, all the works that I've done, you'll do the same thing. And greater than the things that I've done, you'll do. Because I'm about to go to the Father. Now, what he's explaining here is like, now, when you're looking at me, you're looking at the Father because he's in me. This is the same thing that's going to happen with me in you. So you can't see the Father, but you see me. Eventually, he's going to say it here in a few verses, he's going to say, you're not going to see me anymore. I've been with you, but I'm going to be in you like the father's in me and I'm going to be in you. He breaks it all down to him. So the same way that y'all ain't going to see me and you don't see the father, I'm still going to make my abode with you. Watch, he's going to explain it all. At that day, you will know that I am in my father and you in me and I in you. You get what he's trying to show him? 21, he who has my commandments and keeps him, it is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Next, you get, uh, Judas, Iscariot, Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Great questions. Do you get what they're saying? How are we going to see you? You're going to manifest yourself to us, but not to them. Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he'll keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. We will come to this one who loves me. Now watch what Jesus is saying right here. He's saying, here's what this whole love me thing is about. God is saying, if you realize how much I love you, you'll love me. Right, right, amen. And you'll automatically keep my commandments. The commandments isn't an issue. If you know how much I love you, You'll love me. My word is going to be in you. Everything that I've done, you'll do that better. You'll even do greater works than that. Because I'm going to my father. Why? Because as the father's in me who you can't see, soon I'm, you're not going to be able to see me, but I'm going to be in you. The father's in me. I'm going to be in you. We're all going to be in you. We're going to come and make our home in you. No, no, no. God said, I'm going to come and live right with you. Do y'all get this? Yes. Tonight when we leave church and we go get some ice cream or some chicken or pizza or something, then go outside when it's dark and just look. Go, hold on. The God who created all this, the God that parted the Red Sea is living in me. That becomes revelation to you. You won't worry. You just go, thank you, Jesus. This, I, this week I was walking as, I, as, I, as is my, my custom and I'm walking and it just kind of hit me. I'm just talk, because I'm, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Yes, Lord, you're going to work that. Thank you, Father. I thank you for the wisdom. I know how this is going to look. I, and I realized, wow, you're with me. You're hearing me. 
And it gave me such a joy. I mean, I was just, whoo, I got an energy where I started running real fast. I got to the end of the block. I was like, what the world was I thinking? No. He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you, you hear is not mine, but my father's who sent me. These things I've spoken to you while being present with you. But the helper, now watch this. If we say the musician, or if we say the preacher, if we say the, the driver, you get a picture of what he does. But when God says the helper, the helper, AKA the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he's gonna teach you all things. And bring to remembrance all the things that I've said to you. Watch this. When you understand that the comfort is with you, my peace is going to be left with you. Amen. My peace to give to you, not as the world uh, gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Don't be worried. Why is he telling this? Because I'm about to go out and you're not going to be able to see me. But I'm still going to be here with you. Watch, he's going to show you. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you've loved me, you would rejoice because I said I'm going to the Father and my Father is greater than I. He said, you'd be happy that I'm gone. <laughs> and now I've told you before it comes, I told you before it comes, that when it does come to pass, you'll believe what's going on here. When I'm gone and you can't see me, you'll believe, oh yeah, you're here with me. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father as the Father gave me commandments, so, do, uh, so I, I do. Arise and let us go from here. Jump on over, jump on over, jump to 16. If you get the time, or take the time, because this will bring you such comfort. Watch what Jesus says here in chapter 16. He says, but now I go away to him who sent me. And none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I said these things to you, sorrows fill your heart. You're sad. You ain't asking me any questions about where I'm going, and I know you still don't get it, but I see you're all bummed out. You're bumming because I said I'm going. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. It's better for you that you don't see me, that I'm gone. Right? For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I'm going to send him to you. I got to go away so that I can send the helper. Watch this. Listen to what he says here. I still have many things, many things to say to you, but you can't bear them now. You can't even handle what, I, what I'm going to tell you. Watch this. However, when he, you know the one, the helper, the spirit of truth, when he comes, he's going to guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, uh, he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. Watch these next ones. All things that the Father has are mine. He's going to take what's mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Ooh. Wow. Me, the Father, the Holy Spirit, we're all working together in this. And we're going to give it all to you. Come on, somebody. Are you hearing me? Now, here's the key to all this. Listen, y'all. The key to all this, what I'm telling you, is what Jesus said to Philip. Philip, have I been with you so long and you still don't know me? Father, you, you, how can you ask me, show me the Father? I'm, you're looking at him. You can't see him, but he's in me. But can't you tell by what I'm doing? The same way that you're not going to see me I'm going to be in you. Me and the Father are going to be living in you. By the Holy Spirit, we're all going to be, we're going to come and make our home with you. If you believe this, the works that I've done, you'll do better, greater than that. If you get the revelation of who I am that's hit, standing right here talking to you right now, if you get that, you'll do greater than I did. You'll love me because you'll know how much I love you. You'll keep my commandments automatically. You won't even, that won't even be a problem to you. You get what he's saying here? What he's saying is, Get a revelation of who I really am and that I'm with you, just like all of them did. Now watch, here's how you do that. Here, let me make this practical for you. Just like, let's imagine this, if, if my wife who I adore, she is, uh, she's a better spouse to me than I am to her. She's adorable, she is precious to me. And, but if I went in our house for a week and didn't talk to her, just 
walked around the house, or, or even the kids, just walked around, did everything that I was doing, eating like normal, just said nothing to him. Went to bed, slept on my side, she slept on her side, got up, we had no conversation for a solid week. Would that be weird? Yes. It's not normal. We, we live together. We're in a covenant together. We're, in a, we're married together. For us not to communicate is weird. To go a month without us not talking about our dream and talking about our kids, talking about plant, whatever, would be abnormal. However, Jesus is saying to him, y'all got to understand this whole dynamic. When you see me walk away and go away and talk to the father, it's because I know he's with me. Watch what he says. Uh, jump, to the, uh, jump to verse 20. Uh, Let's see, 16 and 23, I think. Therefore, you know, you now have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and your, and your joy no one will take from you. Amen. And in that day, you will ask me nothing. Uh, most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he, he'll give it to you. Amen. Until now, you've asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive. Why? Because I want your joy full. See, when you know that I'm with you, you can go ahead and ask me. Right? right? These things I've spoken to you. Watch this. This is the part I want you all to see. These things I've spoken to you in figurative language. I've been speaking figuratively to you. But the time is coming when I will no longer speak to you in a figurative language, but I will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day, you will ask in my name, and I do not, and I do not say to you that I shall pray the Father for you. And that day, I'm not going to pray to the Father for you, for the Father himself loves you <laughs> because you've loved me and have believed that I came from the Father. I'm not going to have to talk to the Father for you. Yeah. You just talk to him. Amen. I came forth from the Father and have come into the world. Again, I leave the world to go to the Father. His disciples said to him, watch this. His disciples said to him, see now, now you're speaking plainly. And using no figure of speech, now we are sure that you know all things and have no need that anyone should question you. By this, we believe that you came forth from God. He said, what you just said right there, now we believe everything. <laughs> Jesus is wanting to slap him, I believe. Watch what he says. Is that right? Really? I just said that and now you believe me? He says, Watch this. You think you believe me, but indeed the hour is coming. Yes, it's now come that you will be scattered. Tonight, at, you think you believe me just for me saying I'm, I'm, uh, what I just said right there? After I've been with you for three and a half years, been doing miracles, you see me raise the dead. You didn't believe that in that. Me then. But then I just say, I'm going to go to the Father. I'm not going to speak figuratively to you any longer. <laughs> really? <laughs> Let me tell you how much you believe me. Tonight, when I get arrested... Every one of y'all are going to betray me and scatter. Uh, indeed, the hour is coming. Yes, has now come that you will be scattered each to his own and will leave me alone. Y'all are going to leave me. Every one of you disciples are going to bounce, act like you don't. Peter, before that rooster crows three times in the morning, you will have denied me three times. Not me. The Bible, if you read in all the Gospels, it said he started motioning with his hands. He said, Jesus says, somebody in here is, going, is, is about to betray me. Jesus, Peter must have been going like, Read it. It says he's motioning with his hands. You just know he's the one going. Jesus, I would never. Be. And he said in front of everybody, I, you know, I will die for you. And that's when Jesus laid him out. But watch this. He says, y'all are all going to betray me. He says, you're all going to leave me alone. Watch these next words. And yet I'm not alone. Why? Because the father's with me. Even when it looks like everybody's betrayed me, here's, here's what I rely on. I rely on the same thing I'm telling you you're going to have to rely on. Amen. These things I've spoken to you that in me you may have peace. You get what he's saying? And this is, this is what he's saying. Let me put it in, in, in my vernacular. What he's saying is if this becomes more real to you that I'm in you and you're in me, that we're together with you wherever you are, that's got to become more real to you than whatever you're facing you're in. Yeah. It's got to become more real to you that you're in me and I'm in you than you're in lack. It's got to become more real to you that I'm in you and you're in me, I'm with you, I'll never leave you, than you're in prison. 
That's got to become more real to you. That's got to become a reality to you. Are y'all with me? These things I've spoken to you that in me you may have peace and in the world you will have tribulation. Now you're going to have some problems. But be of good cheer because I'm with you and I've already overcome the world. You still going to win because I'm with you. Are you with me? Is that the last one? Here, now, watch this. This is my last thing I'm going to show you. Oh, let me show you the last words that Jesus said before he, uh, before he uh, after he resurrected, before he went to his seat at the right hand of the Father on high until he calls back the church. Matthew 28, verse 18 through 20. Real quick, I'm closing. Ooh, hurry, hurry, hurry. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Next. Last one, teaching them to observe, to observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Last words, I'm with you always. Amen. As he's leaving, I'm with you always. Is that big? Last words. All right, closing with this. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 and 6. Watch this. Hebrews, I believe Paul's the writer here, and watch what he says. Let's read the context here. It's just two verses, but look what it says. This really explains something. This will explain something to you. Watch this. Let your character of, or moral dispos, uh, disposition be free from love of money, including greed, avarice, lust, and craving for earthly possessions. He says, listen, listen. Don't be consumed with getting stuff. Don't do it. Watch this. And be satisfied with your present circumstances and with what you have. He said, listen, learn to see that I'm with you. If you'll focus on that I'm with you. Watch, here, here's his answer. Let me read it like this. Start over again. Let me read it again. Let me read it what we think it should say. Let your character and moral disposition be free from the love of money, including greed, avarice, lust, and craving for earthly possessions, and be satisfied with your present circumstances and with what you have, because I'm going to meet every one of your needs. That's what we think it should say, but it doesn't. The remedy he gives for lacking stuff is this for God himself has said I will not in any way fail you nor give you up nor leave you without support I will not I will not I will not in any degree leave you helpless nor forsake you nor let you down relax my hold on you it's the passage that says I will never leave you nor forsake you God's answer to your lack is know this I'm never gonna leave you I'm with you I'm with you right in it don't go chasing after stuff know this get a revelation that I'm with you I'm your solution. I am your exceedingly great reward. Know that I'm with you. Now, let me make this real to you. Here's a, here's a psalm. Psalm 1611. Y'all got that? You will show me the path of life, David writes in the psalms. In your presence is fullness of joy. When I recognize that you're here with me, that your presence is with me, I find fullness of joy. At your right hand. What is your right hand? Pleasures forevermore. Jesus, revelation of Jesus is the right hand of wisdom. Remember we said that? Now, uh, you can close your Bible, I'll tell you. Oh, uh, they'll, they'll show you these last verse, but watch this. Saul, Paul, who was earlier Saul. Paul the apostle. Do you know that how many, he wrote four epistles in prison. They're called the prison epistles. Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Philemon, Philemon. All written in prison. Paul did a lot of time. Paul went to prison uh, four times and a fifth time in jail. One time is recorded in the book of Acts, chapter 16. Can I read it to you? Acts chapter 16, look at verse 22. This is, this is when he first, the first time he went to jail. Now, he had been beaten, stoned, stoned two chapters before, 13, chapter 13 or 14. He was stoned, and they thought he was dead, so they started dragging him out of the town. The disciples ran and got around him, got him from the people. They had dragged him through town, out of town. Thought he was dead. The disciples grabbed him from the people, got all around him, and he came back to life. Got up, went back to town where they, where they just stoned him, and preached again. What is causing this man, if Paul were in our times, he would be one of the most brilliant people on the face of the earth. This man, he defended himself in court. They took him before King Agrippa. He said, I'm, I'll, I'll be my own defense. 
He, they had arrested him. He went to prison for another time, and he said, hold on, hold on. Under Roman law, I'm allowed to, uh, to do something. He said, I'm allowed to defend myself, and you have to bring me before the magistrate. Take me there. He knew the law. He's a lawyer, and he said, I will defend myself. I'm going to speak on my own behalf. And they said, well, who are, are you this? He said, and he, they expected him to get up and speak in a certain language. He said, I'm going to speak in Hebrew. And he defended himself in Hebrew. Why? Because it was before Jews and they had a certain rules that they went by. And he said, I mean, the dude was brilliant. All right. He was highly educated. He was he was amazing. A genius. If he were in our time. Right now, watch this. Watch what happened. There was this woman. Let me tell you the story. There was this woman everywhere he was preaching that came every day going, Paul is a man of God. And she was just annoying, taking him off. <laughs> Finally, he said he got annoyed with and turned around and said, Come out of her in the name of Jesus. Well, the devil came out of her and she was being paid. She was a slave girl, but she was being paid to, uh, to be a, uh, what do you call that? Like a, a fortune teller. And after he cast the devil out of her, she couldn't tell any more fortunes. And the people got mad and they started saying, hey, this dude, is, he's wrong. This guy is just stirring up trouble. And look what they said. Then the multitude rose up together against them, Acts 16 and 22. And the magistrates tore off Paul's clothes and his sidekick, Silas. Tore, come on, y'all, get the picture. Ripped their clothes off of them, uh, uh, tore, their, uh, tore off their clothes, and commanded them to be beaten with rods. Watch. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. They threw them in the center. Having received such a charge, he put them in the inner prison and fastened their feet with stocks. This is where the sewage went through. Theologians say that sewage was up to his waist. While he's in prison, watch what happened. Oh, this is awesome. While he's in prison, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to him. Here they are in there. Lord, you're worthy. We love you. God, you're so wonderful. They're praising God. Where is he getting this? No, no. Some of y'all complain because you have to be here at 1030. I don't feel like coming to church. I'm I'm tired. I had to work today. <laughs> Paul is standing in boo-boo and, and mess up to his waist going, thank you, Jesus. But watch what happened. And the prisoners were listening to him next. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. I'm telling you, if you learn to praise right in the middle of your problem, you're going to give your trouble trouble. You're going to give your problem some problems. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and not just Paul's and Silas's sidekick's chains fell off, but everyone's chains fell off. Their praise caused a problem. And the keeper of the prison, awakening from sleep, seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to commit, what is that called? Harry Carey. He was about to kill himself with his own sword. Paul says, next, but Paul called with a loud voice saying, hey, do yourself no harm. If we're all here. We ain't going nowhere. Prison doors busted open, but Paul ain't leaving. Watch what happens. It gets worse. Then they called and, uh, ran and called for a light, ran in. He fell down trembling before Paul. Says, Paul, what do I got to do to get saved? He brought him out there and said, sirs, what must I do to get saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved. That's all you got to do. You and your whole house. Are just believe on Jesus, right? Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all who were in his house. And he took the, watch, and he took them the same hour of the night, washed their, this guard keeper now is washing them, yeah. serving Paul, washing all, because he's been beaten. I mean, he's standing in sewage, jacked up naked. Now, these are regular guys. Paul and Silas, these are regular dudes. I think they like clothes. I think they don't like getting beat. These are regular people just like me and you. But how do they praise and how do they not leave the prison when the doors bust open? Come on. This prison is trying to bust the doors open. Watch what happens. It gets crazier. Immediately, he and all his family were baptized. I'm telling you, y'all, we got to see who Jesus is. Yeah, yeah. We're, many of us, we don't get it. And, and we're just, uh, we're all overcome with our problem. If we get overcome with Jesus, our problems will fall. Now, when he had brought them into the house, he set them before again. Next, next. Oh, oh, and he rejoiced. That dude was rejoicing, going crazy that he saved. And when it was day, the magistrate sent officers saying, let those men go. Get them out of the prison. 
So the keeper of the prison reported these things to Paul, saying, the magistrates have sent to let you go. Now, therefore, depart and go. Get out of here and pe-. just leave. Look what Paul says. But Paul said to them, they have beaten us openly. Uncondemned Romans have thrown us into prison, and now do they want to put us out secretly? No, indeed. Let them come themselves and put me out. (laughs) This is a free man in prison. When God's with you, you don't care what's going on. I'm willing to stand here in sewage even if the doors are open. I'm not finished. Y'all ain't running me off like that. This don't even bother me. Get what he's saying right here, y'all. If we'll get Jesus big enough. Now watch, Paul writes four epistles. He ends up in Rome in prison for nearly five years. Come on, (laughs) y'all. In prison. And he writes the book of Ephesians. Put on the whole armor of God. (laughs) Although I'm in bonds and chains, pray for me, but you need this. He's encouraging them while he's in chains. In sewage, writing gospel, writing the epistles. Let me show you one thing he wrote in Philippians, the last verse. Philippians 4.4. 4. Paul writes in Philippians, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. I'm telling you, this man knew something. He knew something about the presence of God and giving God praise right in the middle of what's going on. He, he did not care. I'm telling you, if we, if we will get an attitude of worship and praise... If we'll learn to worship God regardless, I I, I ain't even paying no attention to you. I ain't paying no attention to what this problem is. I don't even want to talk about it. I ain't even thinking about it. Jesus, I thank you. You are with me. There is no weapon that's formed against me that can prosper. Lord, you are bigger than my problem. You are bigger than what the doctor said. You are bigger than me not having every car that I want. You're bigger than me not having that husband that I want. You're bigger. You're greater than me. But God, I want a baby. I want a baby. God said, I'm your exceedingly great reward. Are y'all getting this? Close your Bible. 